This is News Talk. It's six fifty on Breakfast Business, and we're joined now by Lorcan Allen, Agri Business Editor at the Irish Farmers Journal. Lorcan, thanks for taking our call. Uh, you're publishing a very detail, your very detailed 2020 Irish Farmers Journal KPMG Agri Business Report, your annual one in the newspaper this morning, and the whole focus is on sustainability. Uh, Very good timing because we saw the European Commission bring out its farm to fork strategy yesterday. Uh, A lot of detailed proposals as to how the agri-sector can meet uh, carbon targets, including one of the issues that you in your document today basically said was essential, that farmers would be paid uh, to capture carbon on their farms. Yeah, good morning, Vincent. Um, yeah, I think it's uh, it's kind of lucky, all right, with the timing, but um, uh, there's a lot of change happening, uh, in, both in terms of policy, but I would also say that on the ground and in the agri-food industry, there's enormous change taking place as well. And I suppose listening to a lot of the commentary over the last month, uh, you know, around government formation talks and Ireland meeting its 7% emissions reduction target, um, agriculture was in the firing line quite a lot about how it was actually going to, uh, you know, meet its climate change commitments. And I, I just kind of get the sense that there's a bit of a public narrative out there over the last month that the industry was doing, you know, very little to meet its climate obligations. And the, the reality is that... Um, it couldn't be further from the truth. So, so that's why this year, um, this year's agribusiness report produced by the Farmers Journal and KPMG kind of looked at, you know, that whole idea of sustainability and tried to highlight a lot of the really positive things that are going on in the industry. And some of it is really world leading, um, research and, and, and development. And as you, as you mentioned rightly, um, you know, the idea that farmers will be paid to capture carbon from the atmosphere is, is a crucial part of that. Uh, Ireland is really leading the fore in terms of um, this whole area of carbon sequestration, whereas it's it's the, the carbon dioxide that, you know, our soils, our hedgerows and our trees actually takes out of the atmosphere. And it's not just about the emissions that our, our livestock herd uh, emits into the atmosphere. Now, you, you mentioned the, 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 the national debate that's happened as to how we achieve 7% reductions each year until 2030. And, and I suppose the, the national herd, both beef and dairy, uh, seen as having to come down pretty radically to do that. And that's all because of the methane that, uh, that cattle and cows and other animals emit. They belch effectively, uh, begging your pardon. Um, but you say there's, there's a lot of work going on, a lot of detailed scientific work going work on, on in Ireland uh, as we speak in terms of measuring exactly how much methane is emitted and also in terms of 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 changing feed habits to bring that down even further yeah i mean there's nobody in the industry denying the seriousness of of methane as a greenhouse gas it's a very potent greenhouse gas and cattle are and like ruminant livestock are one of the most you know the major sources of that um so, you know, some of the work I see going on in the industry every day, it's, it's really fascinating. You know, how do you lower that sort of methane output from an animal? And like there's really, uh, you know, we're leading research in genetics in terms of how you breed an, an animal that has lower methane emissions for what it does. There's also a huge amount of work going on in terms of um, sort of technological, technological so- solutions to methane, which will be sort of feed additives that you can give to uh, cows that actually inhibits methane and blocks the methane being um, breathed out by the cow into the atmosphere. Um, but not only on that side of things, there's also great work going on in terms of, as I said, the sequestration side of of uh, what farms do, how much car- carbon farms actually capture out of the atmosphere. And the whole idea of carbon neutral beef farming and dairy farming, Ireland is on and, you know, likely to be one of the first countries ever to produce scientifically measured carbon neutral beef and dairy farms. A number of years ago, this was stuff that was never heard of. But isn't, we're it, really isn't, leading. It, isn't it the case, though, Lorcan, and you give some very fascinating examples of, of some of those advanced farms uh, in, in your report today, some of them being run by Moore Park and Chagas, some by the private sector like Carberry and West Cork. But isn't it the case that they will always be a minority of very highly efficient farms, probably large-scale farms? You know, how can the average Irish farm become carbon neutral by 2050? Well, that's uh, that's the really good question because if we we've never really measured this stuff before. So what the work that's going on in in that, this new project that uh, is going on down in in West Cork to try and measure Ireland's first uh, the world's first ever carbon neutral dairy farm, a lot of that is about creating the baseline of how much carbon is actually captured by a farm every year in general. And we have some kind of estimations, but it's never really been done on an individual farm by farm basis. So when you take a farm and show how much carbon it sequesters, and then you set that against the emissions, you have a kind of a net figure of uh, sequestration versus emissions. And then you can start trying to increase the 
uh, sequestration and kind of lower your emissions to achieve that carbon neutral uh, target. And a lot of it is simple stuff. It's improving your soil health uh, so that the, the soil sequesters more carbon. It's planting more trees. It's improving your hedgerows. Um, and, and that's very achievable for the, or, the average farmer. Uh, and it's, 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 it's about creating the knowledge uh, of, of uh, and so you can have a roadmap into the future for farmers to, to another, empower them to another, do this kind another of Another key area where farmers can help a lot is in generating their own renewable energy, uh, whether it's through solar or in fact through uh, biomethane gas, which could be produced from both the slurry that animals produce and also from grass sown. What are the current Irish government obstacles to farmers doing this on their own holdings? Yeah, it's it's interesting. There's there's actually a really major policy gap here in Ireland at the minute in terms of renewable energy and um you know if there's micro producers or farmers, landowners who want to put in solar panels, there currently is no incentive for them to produce excess solar energy and sell it onto the grid. Um, and there's no obligation for them to be paid for that. And then on the biomethane side of things, or, or biogas as it's called, this is a renewable potentially a renewable replacement for um, natural gas, fossil fuel, natural gas. And like you've known here in Ireland, one of the largest companies in the world, they've got a infant formula plant down in McCroom and they have a target to, that their entire business has to be carbon neutral by, by 2050. But they're also, that, that plant in McCroom has to be carbon neutral by 2025. And that means re- finding a renewable replacement for its what it currently uses is fossil fuel, natural gas. And no one sees the only opportunity to do that is being renewable biomethane. But and it, you know which will be produced on farms where they use grass silage and cattle slurry to produce a biogas, a renewable gas. Currently, there's no you know biogas is more expensive to produce than fossil fuel natural gas. So it needs the, if there was an industry to be established, it needs a kind of a feed in ta- a government support feed in tariff to make it more competitive for regular natural gas. That's not happening at the minute. So now you've got no one banging on the door of the Irish government saying we need. Uh, uh, you know, support in this area because no one needs to hit its targets. And uh, if you want to maintain the FDI of a large company like Danone, you're going to have to facilitate them with, um, you know, real options for uh, renewable energy. Okay, well, lots of interesting things happening down on the farm and and going to continue happening over the next 30 years. Uh, And also perhaps if Greens are in government, we might see some changes on those policy issues as well. But Lorcan Allen of the Irish Farmers Journal, thanks for joining us this morning. That's it from Breakfast Business for this morning. Back with bulletins at half past seven and half past eight.